Here is the path to the dark side. Now that you've heard from the fawning po po politicians, Governor Rendell et al., concerning what a good, honest, and caring man Vincent Thuma is, we hope you have a few moments to consider the thoughts of two hardworking taxpayers. Vincent Thumo is a disgrace to every honest citizen of Pennsylvania and a model what every public servant should strive mightily to avoid. He is a perfect example of the old adage, power corrupts, but absolute power corrupts absolutely. Senator Fumo's exquisite arrogance led him to believe that his power was absolute. In reality, it was his corruption that was absolute. Sentence him for a length of time so that we Pennsylvanians will never have to hear or read his name again. Now, I read that letter because I think that letter probably represents an awful uh, lot of the sentiment about people who read about this p case in the paper uh, who have not carefully analyzed it, in my opinion, but they're entitled to their judgment and to their view. I'm not going to talk much more about your character because I, I think it's kind of uh, not particularly helpful. And there's a legal point that I, I want to make. I know Your Honor knows it, but just so the record is complete. And with regard to a departure, we're all in agreement. The circumstances have to be exceptional. And on that point, I want to say that the Serafini case, as Mr. Pease said, is on point. The Serafini case held that they rejected a district court's ground for departure of good works by a Pennsylvania state senator where, unless it involved the devotion of his own time and his own money. But, the, but what was Mr. Fumo's contribution? And what you've heard is, is there was a meeting, there was a phone call, there was putting the right person in touch with the right person, there was somebody who was really good at his job. But you heard nothing about any of this done outside of business hours or outside of that enormous amount of vacation time that I talked about. But I'm sure Your Honor is looking to see, is there something here out of the ordinary that warrants a variance below the guideline range that would apply to the ordinary citizen who steals two and a half million dollars, who obstructs justice? And that's where the, the point I want to make, the important legal point is, even if you were to conclude that what happened here was terrific or exceptional or whatever you want to use. Your Honor has the discretion not to do it. That was always the law for a departure and it's still the law for a variance. And the point that I'm making, and this is where we end, I'm taking less than five minutes, is that in this case, in a case of this prominence involving this person, it, there is an important message that Your Honor is sending. I think every state legislator is, is going to read in the paper tomorrow what Your Honor does. I think many citizens will as well. And the question is, what will they read? Will they read that if someone is good at their job as an elected official, brings in money, knows how to, to bring the deals together, makes the right phone calls, that that person gets a break on their sentence now, as now opposed here's, here's to someone Here's what I hope they'll read. I hope they'll read that the judge gave due and careful consideration to the sentencing factors. And I hope they'll read what those factors are and think, which they won't do, but think what would they have done in the same position and think whether this was a reasonable and fair verdict. Whether this was a reasonable and fair verdict. Absolutely. And that's what I want. People won't do that. They won't bother about that. They'll, they'll look at the bottom line. That's what they're going to look at. Now, that's, you know, that's not what we get to. I have to... I have to a lot of thinking to do before I impose a sentence here, and I, I truly do appreciate your stating that position because it's a part of the thing I have to consider. In your you, you have an imposed sentence, you haven't said your reasoning yet, and everyone will evaluate that and know the careful consideration no, that you No, they won't. They won't evaluate it very carefully. <laughs> but that's all right. I'm not used to people but, taking but, the time but what to carefully I, but, evaluate. They come to a quick judgment, but I'm, that's what I'm... But what I want to say... It doesn't bother me. What I want to say, my last suggestion, Your Honor, is that the suggestion was made to Your Honor, and they took more time, and that's fine, to saying it than we did. Yeah. The suggestion being made to Your Honor from this side of the bar, not what Your Honor is saying, yeah. but the suggestion being made from this side is that crimes were committed. You heard almost nothing today about the crimes. Crimes were committed, but there needs to be lenience because of the extraordinary works that were done. And I'm saying... No, I don't think that's the way it goes. That's not the way it goes, uh, 
at all in my analysis. Okay. Well, that's fine. But, okay. Thank you, Your Honor. I've given my life to my job. It's fun, Judge. It is fun. I confess. I had fun at my job. I loved my work. I'm a ruthless politician. And I am. It's one way I got to where I got. I was addicted to it. And, yes, I was entrepreneurial. I did play in all fields. I did try to get power. And I got power, Your Honor. And it was selfish of me because I was so involved in what I did and I loved. I've lived with this torment, Your Honor, for years now, day in and day out. What's going to happen next? Where are they going? What's going to happen? What's now I stand here as a convicted felon, as a convicted felon, as a convicted felon, as a convicted felon. I can't argue the verdict. I can't argue the verdict. I can't argue the verdict. I'm not going to talk much more about your character because I, I think it's kind of uh, not particularly helpful. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering.